And welcome back to American Agenda. Uh, big breaking news today, the Supreme Court blocking President Biden's vaccine mandate for large businesses, those businesses with over 100 employees. Yeah, 100 employees or more, uh, but keeping in place the vaccine mandate for federally funded health care centers. Joining us now to discuss, host of Stacy on the Right on Sirius XM and Project 21 co-chair, uh, one of our favorites always, Stacy Washington. Uh, Stacy, uh, thank you very much for joining us and your thoughts on these two different opinions uh, handed down by the Supreme Court today. So I was hoping that they would both be struck down because the the employees are going to now, there'll be fewer of them, and they're already short-staffed. So the issues that were brought up about the staffing, uh, to me, they were argued on the side of, like, respecting the staffing. The arguments were unclear, and I think that really is reflected in the ruling. Um, I, I don't think we've seen the end of it because they're just not going to have enough people to help the patients that they have. On the private employer side, I'm especially happy about it because a lot of employers have a vaccine mandate or or you have to test. And it, even for remote employees, which is so nonsensical, if someone is not in the workplace, if they work from their home, why should they waste the money and the effort on testing that employee when they are not around other employees? So a lot of the, the, the uh, descriptions and the punishment on the OSHA mandate just didn't make any sense. I'm so glad the Supreme Court saw that. And now we have to deal with it, private employers and the decisions that they're going to make. And hopefully they'll allow religious exemptions and medical exemptions as they have in the past. Um, but I am glad that the rulings came down uh, this quickly and that the one ruling for uh, employers of over 100 employees went as well as it did. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about the health care workers. California has reached the point where they've asked positive testing employees healthcare workers to come back to work to take care of their people uh, because they've run out of them. Um, a separate question, though, Stacey, do, would you support the right of a private business to say, if you want to work with us, you have to get a vaccine? That separates it from the government saying this is a mandate. Would you support that? Because then the person could say, well, I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm going to go work somewhere else. So... I actually don't support that. What mm -hmm. what I support is if an employer has a mandate, right, if they're saying we want people to get vaccinated, then they also have to say, I'm requiring you to get vaccinated. So you know what, Stacey, if you take this shot against your will, really, because I'm saying you have to have it to keep your job, then I will also cover your medical expenses. And I will ensure that the same amount of money that I'm paying you now, you have that for an extended period of time as you recover from Bell's palsy or anything else that might happen to you as a result of you taking the vaccine. And if you should die unexpectedly from myocarditis, uh, drop dead from a, a heart attack after taking the vaccine, then we're going to pay your family X amount of dollars because we're the precipitating cause of this event in your life. Um, so it's it's that serious. We've had over 18,000 vaccine-related deaths in this country. And usually vaccine-related deaths that are reported to VAERS represent 1%, 1% reported. So if 1% are reported and it's 18,000, then extrapolate that out to the true number of Americans who have possibly died as a result of taking this shot. So I right. take it very seriously. The amount of money that I earn assists my husband and I with putting our kids in college, paying the mortgage on my cute house, putting boots on my feet, getting our dog to the groomer, paying yeah. all of our bills. Yeah. So I think my employer is going to say, you can't earn that money anymore, and it's not for performance. It's not because I'm not doing my job. It's because they want me to make a health care decision. They actually want to step into me and my doctor's office because I have an autoimmune disease. I'm not taking the shot because of that and because it's based on the aborted fetal cell lines, which goes against my religion as an evangelical Christian. I have valid yeah. reasons for not taking the shot. I expect yeah. them to expected by my employer. And I'm, I'm, there are millions of us who are in this situation, 70 million of us. That's true. Well, we're going to take a quick break. I mean, obviously, a lot of opinions now are coming down about this decision. I wanted to include this. Uh, South Carolina's attorney general's office just saying, we've never seen an administration try to weaponize the federal bureaucracy the way the Biden administration has. We're grateful the Supreme Court agrees with us that no president has the authority to mandate vaccines for private employers. But as you've said, now goes back to the states and the lower courts, so we'll see. That's what, what we're going to have to next. find out. Yeah, we'll continue the conversation after this on American Agenda.